There's been a recent column printed that disturbed me so much that I had to tell somebody about it. <laughs> On townhall.com, there's a columnist named Mike Adams <laughs> who wrote, Calling a union between two men or between two women a marriage doesn't make it one. It's like embedding the name Jesus Christ in the official title of the LDS Church and thinking that makes Mormonism somehow Christian. Call a square a triangle, but if you, li if you like, but it's still a square. Your hard-headedness won't make it become a triangle. It will only make you appear obtuse. <coughs> One thought I have about that comment he made, this was uh, first published uh, May 31st of 2013. Mike Adams is one of the things that doesn't make sense about Mike Adams writing like that is we agree with him about marriage. Why step on your friend's toes or your allies' toes and maybe they won't be your allies anymore. At least those who were of that group are, weren't sure <laughs> about uh, about that subject and how to vote will be less likely to vote the way you would think they sh would encourage them to vote. <clears throat> but we are Christians. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints are Christians. I would have zero, zero complaints if he added any adjective before Christian. Even if it was real. If he wrote, makes you a real Christian, I would not have a complaint. If he wrote, if he <laughs> and thinking Mormonism some, uh, somehow a Christian, but you are one of the Christians that Jesus is going to say, I know you not, get thee away from me, get thee hence, then I wouldn't complain about that. <coughs> but we are Christians. We believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the only way anyone will ever be forgiven for their sins and get resurrected. But he wrote embedding the name. Seems to me like he's hinting at that being some kind of a recent thing. Jesus Christ was not embedded in the name of the church to trick people. Jesus Christ, the official name of the church, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, has been that way since 1838, eight years after our founding. And we didn't call ourselves the Church of Mormon for eight years. The Church of Christ or the Church of Jesus Christ was one of the names that we uh, went under and called ourselves by before settling on uh, receiving the revelation, uh, which has been the settled official name of the church now since 1838. So Jesus Christ is not embedded in the title of the church. It's been there from virtually day one. <coughs> When I saw that, I was debating with myself. Do I send him an email? Do I complain to the website that published it? Or do I just let it go? And then he came up with his next column, which went from bad to worse. I'm not sure if I'm ever going to read Town Hall again. I guess I should give them a chance to not print his columns anymore, or maybe I'll just decide to read it, but skip his worthless bullcrap. Is oh. He titled his next column, My Apology to Mormon Readers. And it's not scrolling, oh, it's still loading. <coughs> I read the start of this column. Dear Stacy, you've written dem demanding an apology for my recent characterization of the Mormon religion as non Christian. I am happy to write a public letter of apology to you and the countless Mormon readers who responded <coughs> negatively to my characterization. <coughs> 
And one of the things he wrote is, I am sorry they were unaware that I read the Book of Mormon back in 2006. He's lying somewhere. He's lying somewhere. You cannot read the Book of Mormon and come away thinking that Mormons don't believe in Jesus Christ. And so he's lying about having read the book, or he's lying about us not being Christians now. Either way, he's lying about something. Then <sighs> the rest of his column is him making accusations against our church and not apologizing for not apologizing for um, calling us what we aren't and mischaracterizing the name of the church and whether how long Jesus Christ has been in there and if Jesus Christ is embedded in there which in my mind implies that it wasn't there in the first place and was added later <sighs> it's, uh, in his next column he repeats some of the harshest accusations that our antagonists make against us and I'm not going to quote his whole column here but a few points uh, in response to his column we do not believe Joseph Smith was sinless and perfect so anything that any of Joseph Smith's imperfections has absolutely nothing, zero, to do with whether we believe in Jesus Christ. Which is what his first column, the paragraph was in his first column that got this flood of emails that he, maybe some of the people that wrote to him uh, didn't stick to uh, correcting him on his two points in the column. I've got to give him benefit of the doubt on that. Maybe there were some people that went off on tangents in their response to his first column. <sighs> Joseph Smith being a human as imperfections in no way disproves that he could have received a revelation from God. God's prophets in the past have been imperfect. <clears throat> And uh, he made some comment about archaeological evidence for the Book of Mormon. <coughs> the Book of Mormon does not claim to be a book that tells us about every single civilization or individual that ever lived in the Americas. <coughs> so maybe there are people that lived in the Americas that weren't Nephites and Lamanites. That doesn't disprove that there were Nephites and Lamanites. And there has been some art, there is archaeological evidence, but archaeologists, who really aren't worthy of the name archaeologists, sometimes will ignore evidences. And there are scientists like that that really aren't scientists that will find a mammal fossil right next to some dragon fossil, <coughs> or should I say dinosaur, but they weren't called dinosaurs until the mid 1800s, but they were around before then some dragon fossil and not point that out and then make a museum uh, presentation that doesn't have the mammal with the dinosaur even though they were together they lived together there's no other way they could be fossilized together <coughs> and DNA evidence will never prove the Book of Mormon wrong because we don't know the family tree of every single person in the Book of Mormon. There are several people that we don't know about. <coughs> For example, Lehi's wife. Nahum, uh, Nanalam. Oh, the guy who's Nephi's son uh, became their father-in-law. Um, they buried him in Nahum, which has been found in the Arabian Peninsula <coughs> and uh, so 
brain freeze. The uh, the servant who uh, went with them, and the people who went came with the son of King Zedekiah who escaped. We don't know how many and who and where they came from. And to say that DNA evidence proves such a thing is also claiming that there's never been any migration of any people anywhere in the world, and everybody lived in the same place where their ancestors lived for thousands of years, which is a load of crap. <laughs> we know that what, the ten tribes of Israel were scattered. They're mixed up in the nations. <sighs> no, thank you for listening to me rant. I don't know if I'll boycott townhall.com or just skip over Mike Adams stuff from now on, but... Wow, he crossed the line. <laughs> crossed the line big time. And I'm really hard to offend. <sighs> you yeah, have a good day. Thank you for listening to me.